Today we are designing, simulating and analyzing a DC coupled differential amplifier and this is to answer the question in Art of Electronics exercise 2.27. The question says this needs to be a single ended output and the gain is 50 for signals near ground. The supply voltage for the circuit is going to be plus or minus 15 volts and it's going to have a quiescent current of 0.1 milliamps or 100 microamps in each transistor. We also need to use a current source in the emitter and we need to use a emitter follower output stage. So on the screen now you've got a brief summary of all the requirements for this question. So we have a gain of 50, the input signals are near ground, the supply voltage is 15, the equation current is 0.1 milliamps, the output is single ended and we need a emitter follower, we need a current source in the emitter. So let's get started with the design. However, designing circuits is just one part of the journey. We also need to bring them to life. And for that, we have PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. They make ordering prototypes and assembled boards fast, affordable and hassle-free. So whether you're just testing your very first design or scaling up to full production runs, PCBWay offers a wide range of options to fit your needs. The easy to use online platforms let you upload your Gerber files, select your board specification and get an instant quote. Plus, they provide excellent customer support to help you through the process. I've used PCBWay myself for many projects and their quality and turnaround times are impressive. Big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and supporting makers like us. Now let's get started with the video. Let's start by designing our circuit. So what I'm going to do is use LT Spice for this and create a new schematic and put down components that we need. So firstly, we need two power supplies. The middle of the power supply is going to be ground. And both of these power supplies are going to be 15 volts. Now we know we need a differential pair. So for that, we need NPN transistors and two resistors. So I'm going to place the NPN transistors next. And they're generally connected up like this. We are also going to need a current source over here but we will add that in later on. We need a input signal to one of our transistors. So let's copy this power supply and connect that up to ground. Let's make the signal very small. So DC offset of zero and let's just make it 10 millivolts with a frequency of two Hertz. The other transistor is connected to ground so our input signal is going to come from here so let's put down a net for that and for the time being we're going to take our output from over this side Next, we can add in our RE resistors or the degeneration resistors, I think they're called. And this is basically to allow us to control the gain. And over here, we will need a current source. So what I'm going to do at the moment is just put down a current source and then we can come to design it later on. Now, the question says we, we need the transistors to have 100 microamps flowing through them. The current flowing down this path is going to be 100 microamps and the current flowing down this path is also going to be 100 microamps. So we're going to have a total of 200 microamps flowing down this direction. So I've got a current source over here that's got 200 microamps flowing through it. Next, we want to basically try and set the gain to 50. So we've got our input signal, which is near ground. We've got our plus or minus 15 power supply. We've got our single ended output. We need to add a emitter follower at the end, which we'll do later on. And we need a gain of 50. So now if you go to your Art of Electronics book, you will be able to see that the differential gain is equal to RC divided by 2 times RE plus uh, lowercase RE, which is the intrinsic emitter resistance. And we've covered in the past that RE is equal to VT divided by IE and VT is equal to 25 millivolts. So first, let's calculate our RE. So Vs is 15, we need a gain of 50, IE is equal to 0 0.001, so that's 100 microamps. 
So RE equals VT divided by IE, which gives us a RE value of 250 ohms. So our RE is fixed. Now we need to basically set our gain. So G diff, as I already said, is equal to RC divided by two times RE plus RE. We don't know RE uppercase and we don't know RC as well. We do know G diff and we do know RE. Next, we can calculate the value for RC just because we know the current that's going to go through it. So we know the current through the transistor is 100 microamps. Very little current is going to come through the base. So most of it is going to be through the resistor on top. So the RC resistor, we can get 15 volts across this resistor so that the quiescent point is basically at uh, zero volts. So the output will be zero when the input is zero. And now to basically calculate RC, we can just put down um, Ohm's law, which is V equals IR. I is the IE current or approximately the IE current. So R is equal to V divided by I. And we just said that V is going to be the power supply and the current and the current is the emitter current over here. So that gives us a RC value of 150K. So let's start putting that in now. We don't actually need this resistor over here, so we can delete it if we want to. Next, we can calculate RE by rearranging this equation. So G diff equals two times RE plus two RE is equal to RC divided by G diff. So I've basically taken this, that side, and taken this, this side. So two times RE is equal to RC divided by G diff minus two RE. And let's not forget the brackets. And RE is equal to RC divided by G diff minus two RE and all of that basically halved. So now we can calculate RE by just placing this equation. So brackets RC divided by G diff minus two times RE and all of that times by 0 0.5. So that gives us a RE resistor of 1,250 ohms. So if you don't do it this way, what will happen? Let's say you just put down a 100 ohm resistor over here or something. You'll still get your 100 microamps flowing through it. Um, to get your gain of 50, you'll need to reduce the value of this resistor. And what that will mean is that you're going to have a significant offset. Let's say you got 100 microamps flowing down this and a smaller resistor over here means you're going to have less of a voltage drop. That means that this point is going to be closer to the power supply rail. And just because we have a small signal input, I think we need a close to ground output as well. Let me know your thoughts on that as well. I mean, we can go with a different value resistor over here and here to basically keep the RE resistor small, but I don't think we need to. So we got 1,250 there. And what we can do now is simulate that. So let's simulate it over one second. And I don't think I have the right current source. So 200 microamps. Let's just check that. We are getting 200 microamps flowing down that path. Let's make this bigger. Let's check our input. It's basically plus or minus 10 millivolts. And our output is... Approximately 983. Let's call it 984. So if I go back to my calculations, our input is... 20 millivolts peak to peak and our output is 983 peak to peak so we in we out so the gain is equal to v out divided by v in so we've got a gain that's very close to what we wanted of 50 so we do have a small offset over here my lt spice um, crashed so the next circuit i'm going to build is going to be with the current source um, designed in as well so i'm not going to rebuild this at the moment um so this is my previous recording. We have a bit of an offset over here, and that's probably because of a mismatch in the currents between the two um, sides. I'm back to the circuit that we were on. I had to recreate it because of the crash on LT Spice. I've added a current source down here, and it's a very basic current source, obviously. And what I've done is put down a 1.24 volt uh, reference here. Now this could be a different voltage over here, doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is consider this voltage and basically set the value of R3. So this could be a Zener diode, for example, that sets this point to 5 volts. And then this point would be your 5 volts minus your 0 0.6. And so basically 4.4 volts over here. 
Obviously, this point is connected to minus 15 volts. So you've got minus 15 over here. And in this case, you've got 1.24 volts over here. So let's do our calculations again. So Vs minus is minus 15 volts. Our reference is 1.24. So Vb is equal to minus 15 plus this voltage over here because this is going in the positive direction. That means that Ve is going to be this minus 0 0.6. And 0 0.6 is basically the VPE voltage over here. So that gives us a voltage for this resistor. So the voltage across VR3 is equal to minus 15 minus this voltage over here. So minus 0 0.64. We can ignore the minus sign on that and we'll basically get a minus sign on the resistor we calculate as well. So again, we're going to use Ohm's law. So we divide by I. So we know what V is. We know what I is. We need this times two. So that's 200 microamps. R3 is going to be equal to this divide by this which gives us a R3 resistance value of 3200 ohms and this resistor over here is fairly free you can set it to like 10k all you need it to be is basically provide enough current through this path over here so that you're not getting a massive voltage drop because of the current going through the base now the current going through the base is very small so it's IE of 200 microamps so the IB is going to be 100 times less than that, so maybe 2 microamps. So it's nothing significant, so 10k resistor there will be fine. So that is our circuit. Let me make sure I save it so we don't get another crash. Let's check our current source to make sure we're getting 200 microamps. Now there's going to be a bit of oscillation on this just because of the way the circuit works. And you get slightly different voltages across the transistor. It's roughly 200 microamps as we wanted it. So the midpoint is sitting at 196 microamps. Next, we can look at the gain of this. So our input is 20 millivolts peak to peak and our output is 959. So we had previously 983. So we now have a gain of 48. So obviously it's changed slightly and that's just because I've selected transistors over here. I don't think I did that on the previous one. And we have a current source that's not ideal as well. So there's gonna be small differences between the two circuits. But this is giving us a gain that's very close to what we want. And we have included a current source as required by the question. The last thing we need on this circuit is a emitter follower, NPN transistor with a resistor. And this resistor I'm gonna to connect to the negative power supply so that we can get negative voltage swings as well. So I'm gonna connect our first output to the base of the emitter follower. And now we're going to take our output from over this side. So now that we have drawn the circuit for the emitter follower, we need to calculate one more component and that is the emitter resistance that's connected to Q4. So in this circuit, that's R1. So there's a few considerations that we need to make when we are designing this part of the circuit. We are going to draw some current from this path and we are going to divert it this way. So in order to not affect this part of the circuit significantly, we need to make sure that we're drawing much less current than the 0.1 milliamps that is flowing down this path. So the current that's flowing down this path is 100 microamps. So we should try to draw less than a tenth of that. So I'm going to say the maximum current that we need to go down this path is going to be 10 microamps. So IB is equal to 10 microamps. VB is very close to zero volts. Obviously in our simulation, we had 0 0.4. I'm going to assume an ideal operation and just go for zero. And then that gives us the VE voltage for Q3 as minus 0 0.6 volts. So that gives us the voltage for the emitter resistor. And that is basically the negative power supply, so minus 15 volts. And on the other side, we have minus 0 0.6 volts. So we're going to have minus 14.4 volts on the emitter resistor. Next, we want to calculate uh, what the IC current we want to have. So the only thing we know is that we want to draw less than 10 microamps from this side. So what we can do is assume that beta for Q4 is 100. So that will give us a IC current of 1 milliamp if we are passing 10 microamps through the base. So the current through the collector and the emitter is going to be 100 times more or beta times more than what's coming through the base. So if you know the current and we know the voltage, we can calculate what R1 is going to be. So we can set the R1 value as the voltage divided by the current and that gives us a 14.4k resistor. And with that, we have calculated all the components that we need to for the circuit and we can try to simulate it. 
So you can see we are getting some distortion on this and that might be because we are pulling too much current from this side. So what we can do is increase the value of this resistor to something like 30k. So now current that's coming through this side is 2.4 microns instead of the 10 microns that we had previously. So you can see the circuit is very sensitive to the emitter resistor that we have. And what we need to do is just make sure that the current flowing down this path is low enough so that we are not affecting its performance. So I'm just going to go for a value of 30k on this and simulate it and you can see the waveform has less distortion on it now. Obviously if you wanted to help the situation further you can go for a Darlington pair or something like that on here so that you get more current gain but the question doesn't say how much current we need to drive from the emitter follower so we should be happy with whatever current that we're driving through here which is basically half a milliamp. We can also make this like a buffer and just have 100 microamps flowing down this path but half a milliamp should be fine. So the last thing to consider for this circuit is the output resistance. So the output resistance is mainly dependent on the intrinsic emitter resistance of the emitter follower. And we can find that out with this equation over here. So Vt is 25 millivolts and IC we know in this case is 480 microamps. So let's just call that 500 microamps. So RE is equal to Vt divided by IC. So we've got a output resistance for this circuit of 50 ohms. That should answer the question. We can make some design changes to improve the performance, but this should answer the question that is being asked in the book. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.